Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to be solving the first question from the fourth chapter of the Merriam textbook. And in this one, we need to determine the force in each member of the loaded truss as a result of the hanging weight W. So basically, we have three different members, AC, AB, and BC, that we need to figure out the force in each member. And we're going to start with the free body diagram. So we're going to start with the free body diagram of joint B. And if we draw the free body diagram, we have the weight of the W. We have the force in member BC. We can show it with FBC. And we also have the force in member BC. BA. So we are in equilibrium. We can use our equilibrium equations. We're going to start with sum of all forces in x direction is equal to zero. So we can see we have some information regarding the angles. Um, if you look at the left one, we can easily find the hypotenuse five, which is coming from the Pythagorean theorem. And same for the other one, we basically have the square root of two squared plus one squared. So four plus one, that's going to be square root of five. So if you want to find the x component of FBC, basically we have FBC times the x component. And if we look at it, x component would be two over the hypotenuse, which is square root of five. And since it's to the right, as we can see, this will be the x component. So since it's to the right, it will be positive. And we have FBA which we see the x component will be to the left. So negative minus FBA times this time four is our horizontal component. We can show our x and y in here. So minus FBA four over five is equal to zero. Now from this one, we can find the relationship between FBC and FBA. And the second equation that we have, we have sum of all forces in y direction is equal to zero. And we have the component of the y component of FBC, which will be upward. So positive FBC times this time we'll have one over square root of five. And also we have y component of BA, which will be what we have in here. Again, positive FBA times this time we have the vertical component three over five. And we also have the weight of this, which will be downward equal to zero. And that's pretty much all the forces that we have in here. So from the first equation, from our fx, we can figure out the relationship between FBC and FBA. So FBC would be basically FBA times four over five times square root of five over two. So we can cancel out these two with this. Instead of FBC, we can do 2 square root of 5 over 5 FBA. So we're going to plug that into the second equation. Instead of FBC, we're going to do 2 square root of 5 over 5 times 1 over times FBA times 1 over square root of 5 plus FBA times 3 over 5 is actually equal to W if you bring the W on the other side. So here we can cancel out these two. And what we're going to get is 2 over 5 FBA plus 3 over 5 FBA is equal to W. So if we take the common denominator in here, we have 2 plus 3, 5 over 5. So basically from here, our FBA would be equal to W. So, and we did not get any negative sign that shows the member was in correct direction. So basically, since this is the force that is applying from the member to the joint. The member would be actually in the opposite direction, so it will be in tension. That's the FBA. Now that we have FBA, it's pretty easy to find FBC. So basically, our FBC was what we found in here. 2 square root of 5 over 5 times FBA. So 2 square root of 5 over 5 times W. And that's going to be our FBC. Again, no negative sign that shows the member FBC as well as FBA are both in the direction that we consider. So this one is actually in tension too. So both BA and BC are in tension. Oh, I think in the previous part, I showed it on the member BC as opposed to BA, but same argument applies. Uh, they're both in tension, so it will be the same thing. And there's one more left. And for that one, we can go with the free body diagram of point C or joint C. 
So we're going to do three body diagram of C. And if we do that, what we're going to see at point C. So first of all, we have a roller at point C, meaning we only have normal force since we don't consider any friction in here. In these kind of questions, uh, we do not consider any friction unless we are given some information about the friction, like the coefficient. And when we don't see anything, we can neglect the friction in here. So basically, that's the force that we have in here. So we have the normal force MC, and we have the force of the member BC. So as I talked about the member's intention, the force that is applying from member to the joint has to be in the opposite direction. So this is the correct direction for our FBC based on the Newton's law. And we also have the force FAC, which we do not know what's the direction. So let's just consider it to the right for now and we'll figure it out later. And here we can consider different X and Y just to make it easier for ourselves. So we can do this one, maybe X prime and consider this our Y prime. We can basically take whatever X and Y we want. And if we call this angle here alpha, if we find this angle here alpha 2, so if we consider this our vertical point, if we want to find the alpha, we know uh, these two angles are both alpha because of the trick that we covered in the channel over and over when we have two different angles that each side is perpendicular to the other one. So we can see each side is perpendicular to the side of the other one. These two angles are the same. And what we have in here is the same thing. So we basically have these two and our NC is perpendicular to this one. And this will be our vertical point, which will be perpendicular to this one. So these two angles are the same, which we call it alpha. So now that we have the angle alpha in here, it's pretty easy to find the x component, uh, actually x prime component. So what we are doing in here is we are doing some of all forces in x prime direction. Again, we are allowed to consider any x y axis that we are interested. So if that's the case, we have the FBC, which will be in the opposite direction. So we have minus FBC. And because of the same reason, we have this angle here, alpha 2. So same thing, we have this one perpendicular to this one. And we have this one perpendicular to this one. These two are alpha. And if that's alpha, what we are interested for FAC, we can see that FAC is to the right. So we have plus FAC. Cosine of alpha is equal to zero. That's pretty much everything that we have in x prime direction. And in that case, FAC and cosine of alpha is pretty easy. If you look at this right triangle, this is our alpha. So cosine of alpha in here would be two over square root of five or basically adjacent over the hypotenuse. So FAC times two over square root of five is equal to what we found for FBC. So this will be equal to FBC, which is what we found in the previous step. 2 is square root of 5 over 5 W. And here we can cancel out 2 on each side. And actually, these are the same 2. And from here, we can see that our FAC is W2. No negative sign in here. Uh, that shows the direction that we consider for FAC is correct. But again, this is the this is the force from uh, member to the joint. So the member in here will be in the opposite direction. So this force is in compression. So yeah, that, that would be the final answer for this question. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions. We are covering three different textbooks in this channel for engineering mechanics. Feel free to check out the playlist and let me know if you guys have any specific problem from these textbooks. Then we can cover it in the next videos. And you guys take care. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.